Number 81 says data for a certain biology experiment are given in the table above. If the amount of bacteria present increased by the same factor during each of the two three hour periods shown, how many grams of bacteria were present at 4 p.m.? So the question is very curious about X. Specifically, what is X? Okay, now if you didn't know how to do this problem and you just looked at it, you might see that it's 10 grams at 1 and it's 14.4 at 7, therefore x equals 12.2 because it's in the middle. You know, ironically, answer choice C is 12.2, but if you were to pick this answer, it would be absolutely wrong. And this is one of those tricky questions where you really have to know the rules and know how to do this type of, uh, uh, you know, increase, uh, you know, increasing bacteria, this type of question. Once you've seen it once, you'll know how to do it uh, when you see it again on the GMAT, but um, it can be tricky. So the actual answer to this question is actually A, 12.0. And you might be thinking, wow, why can it be, why is it 12.0? Why would it increase from 10 to 12 and then suddenly go to 14.4? Why wouldn't it go from 10 to 12 to 14? Explain this for me. So um, I will. It, you know, it, it makes a lot of sense when you actually, when you actually look at the, um, the percentage increase. So when you go from 10 to 12 uh, in those three, four hours, uh, actually the amount is increasing by 20%, right? Because you're actually adding two additional grams. So uh, it went from 10 to 12 and increased by 20%. But what's 20% of 12? If it has to go 20, if it increases by another 20%, it would actually increase to 14.4 because 20% of 12 is actually, well, you know what? Let me calculate it for you. So 20 over 100 equals what? over 12, so the zeros, you get 24 over 10. And that is the same as 2.4. Yeah, so 12.0 plus 2.4 gets you 14.4, which is this. So uh, this is why the actual answer uh, is A, it's because it increases by 20% exponentially. Anyway, it's a tricky question, but now that you've seen it, you should have no problem uh, dealing with more questions like this on the actual test. Ooh, a little laggy there. Okay, question number 80, 82 says, if n is an integer, so n is an integer, divisible or greater than 6, which of the following must be divisible by 3? Now, three is an interesting number. Um, I, I see this a lot on the actual test. Uh, let me actually write out the answer choices here, and then I'll explain what this question is actually asking you. So A, they have n, n plus 1 times n minus 4. n, n plus 2, n minus 1. 3, n minus 5. B is n, n plus 4. N minus 2. And finally, we have n times n plus 5 times n minus 6. Now, the interesting thing about this question is it, the GMAT is testing you on a very specific principle that you just have to know. And that is that when you have consecutive numbers, like let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, etc., if you multiply any group of three numbers, it will always be divisible by 3. For example, three, uh, 3 times 2 times 1 is 6, definitely divisible by 3, yeah? Like, let's say we took uh, 3, 4, 5. 3 times 4 times 5 is what? 60, definitely divisible by 3. No matter what three numbers you pick in a consecutive set, it will always be divisible by the number that you picked in that set. So if we had 4, if we had 3, 4, 5, 6, and multiply them together, it would be divisible by 4 because we picked 4 numbers. So in this case, whatever the answer choice here is, it will have to fit into a certain consecutive pattern.
So let's look at it this way. We know that there's n, so n is some number, right? So we know that the number in front of it and the number after it will be divisible by 6. What we also know is that suppose there were other numbers around it. Um, this one would be n minus 1, n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus 3, n plus 4. You get the picture. Uh, if we think of these numbers as sets or as units, this one's a center, this one's on the left, and this one's on the right of the unit. What, we'll, what we need is an answer choice that gets us the center, gets us the one on the left, and gets us the one on the right. If you think about it um, in that very, uh, I guess, spatial sort of way. Um, I'm a spatial thinker, so um, a lot of times I have to kind of draw out uh, the answer in order to kind of visualize it as I do the problems. But in this case, you know, n, we know that all the answer choices have n, so we have the middle one taken care of. We need one on the left and we need one on the right. So let's go through the answer choices. We got n plus 1, n minus 4. n minus 4 is on the left, n plus 1 is on the right. So a looks like it works. But let's check the other choices too. So b says, what does b say? b is n, okay, n plus 2, that's on the left, n minus 1, let's see, n minus 1, that is also on the left. So we have two lefts, so then b doesn't work. C, n, n plus 3 is also in the middle. We already have one in the middle, so it's not going to be C. D is n, n plus 4, which is on the right. n minus 2 is also on the right, so that's why D doesn't work. And finally, E, we have n in the middle. n plus 5 would be actually on the left. I didn't draw it out here, but it would be on the left. Uh, and n minus 6 would be in the middle, so that conflicts with the n, so it's not E. So that's why the answer is A. Number 83 says, let's see, the total cost for company X to produce a batch of tools is $10,000 uh, plus 3 per tool. Each tool sells for $8. Uh, Gross profit earned from producing and selling these tools is the total income from sales minus the total production cost. If a batch of 20,000 tools, so there's 20,000 tools, is produced and sold, what was the profit? So we know that the profit is going to be uh, revenue or amount of sales and all that stuff minus cost of the items. In this case, let's figure out what the revenue is first. This, there's 20,000 tools and each sold for $8, so 8 times 20,000, right? 160,000. Minus, and what's the cost? The cost was $10,000 plus, plus $3 per tool, and there were 20,000 tools. So $3 per tool, that's 60,000. So that becomes 70,000. And then uh, subtract the two, and you get 90,000. Let's see, that is one of the choices. Oh, no. Then they say, uh, what is the gross profit per tool? Okay, so then what we do is we take per tool, 20,000, divided by 90,000, cancel out the zeros. It's not the zero. Two goes into nine four times. Eight. Four point five. And that is answer choice C. Number 84 says a dealer originally bought 100 identical batteries at a total cost of Q dollars. If each battery was sold at 50% above original cost per battery, so each sold 50% above original, um, then in terms of Q, how many dollars was each battery sold? For how many dollars was each battery sold? So first thing we want to do is figure out 
if Q is the total cost of all the batteries, so Q is the total cost, then Q divided by 100 batteries is going to get us the cost of one battery. Right? Yeah? So like if Q was, was uh, $100, and there are 100 batteries. That means each dollar or each battery is one dollar. So this is the equation that we would use to set it up. Secondly, they want to know. Oh, yeah. They tell us that each battery was sold at 50 percent above the original cost, right? So 50 percent above this. So what is that going to be? 50 percent uh, above original cost means 1.5. Yeah. So 1.5 Q over 100. Is that one of the answer choices? No, it isn't. But what is one of the answer choices is 3q over 200, which is really just this times 2 over 2, yeah. Because uh, I guess in the answer choices they want to make sure that you don't have a decimal, or at least they're saying in terms of, uh, in terms of q, which one is the same as the answer, yes. Yeah. So if you multiply 1.5 by 2, you get 3q. 100 times 2, you get 200. So that is the correct answer, and that is answer choice A. 85 says, in an increasing sequence of 10 consecutive integers. Okay, so we're back to consecutive integers. I'll just call it consec int. Then sum of the first five integers is 560. So first five equals 560. What is the sum of the last five integers in the sequence? As I said before, I'm a very spatial learner, so I'm going to draw this out. So here's the first five, and then here's the last five. You know that the first five, when you add them together, you get 560, yeah? So what that means is we should find the average of these five numbers. And there are five numbers, and they total 560. So that's the same as, if we wanted to find the average, it's, it's like saying, let's see, numbers over 5, because there are 5 of them, equals, what, equals, well, no, actually, the numbers add up to 560. So 560 over 5 equals average. There we go. So then we divide, and we get 1. One, uh, two, yes. So what we know is that the average number of here is going to be 112. And we know that they're consecutive. So that means this is the middle number. We can borrow a 1 here and put it here, since these are averages. Borrow 2 here and put it here. Here and now we have consecutive numbers, right? 110, 111, 112, 113, 114. If you add them together, you'll get 560. See what I did there? Okay. What will these numbers be? Obviously, 115, 116, 117, 118, 119, because we're just continuing uh, the 10 consecutive integers. And we just add these up. And if you add these up, let's see, 5, 6, Seven, uh, let's see, plus nine. Let me try to do this in my head here. Uh, two ones. That equals five, eight, five. And that is what is that going to get us? That is answer choice A. Okay, I am all out of time, so I will see you in the next video.